This is the penultimate build for my mother's furniture collection uh, and it's going to be a TV unit. I've skipped a few of the smaller details, uh, wow, well, mid-sized details, as it's, the design is very derivative of all the other furniture that I've built for her. Things like the laminations needed to make the legs or using the pre-laminated kitchen benchtop slabs as the tabletop part. You don't really need to see them being cut and uh, milled, joined, all of that, as it's the same as it has been in the other video. So if you are interested in that detail, go check out my last one, the uh, coffee table build. Uh, as I said, this is a TV unit. There will be plans available at least to the Patreon supporters uh, and further down the track for other people too. Uh, I've got the bench top the top of the TV unit already cut to length and width. We've got some drawer fronts that are going to be re-sawn uh, on the bandsaw. The legs are 60mm by 60mm by about 600 long. I've got one board to make most of the rails out of. I've got my domino stock and I also have a video on making your own loose tenon stock. And a whole bunch of offcuts here from previous projects for mum. I started by cross-cutting the long board to a rough length for the long and short apron rails. I could then more comfortably rip the long rails to width. As you'll see, this is a pretty repetitive project with lots of very similar parts. After the rails were cross cut to length, I could use the domino to quickly do the joinery. This hold fast F clamp combo thing is really useful for batching out domino joinery. After I've been bitten by mistakes a few times, I like to clearly mark the top of my legs in the orientation they'll go when assembled. This makes it much easier to lay out the joinery. Again, the domino is used. Because the sides of the TV unit will have panels, grooves are cut on the router table in the short aprons. For the grooves in the legs, the router is used out of the table. I'm very seriously considering getting a new router as the edge guide on the Trident is absolute garbage and I'm becoming a little bit more frustrated with the brand. The previously mentioned panels are the same Tassie Oak veneered MDF that was used in the set of drawers. Both leg assemblies were glued at the same time, but nothing else. If I was to glue all the rails and, and face room together all at the same time, it would be almost impossible to get it all clamped up before the glue set and would be a real nightmare. In the end, I think I had three or four major glue up sessions. After the leg assemblies were glued up, I could start work on the joinery for the face room, which again was dominoed. This created a nice stack of modest rails. For the central vertical face frame members, I had to set the domino to the shallowest setting and domino on both sides. As I mentioned at the start, I make my own loose tenon stock, so I cut that to length at the bandsaw.
I made a mistake with where I put the mortise on my leg as I'd forgotten entirely about making the face room. It wasn't too difficult to fix this up with the new mortises, but it did mean the legs had to hang off the workbench so that the fence on the domino could hang off it. All right, so we're getting there with the TV unit. Um, the two frames are glued. They're not glued into the legs at the moment. Um, they are just in there to hold it in place. Um, so the next thing I need to do is create spaces like this that'll fit in between the two rails and that'll give me somewhere to screw the draw slides on. So I've got a whole bunch of these. They are the same width as these rails here, so 32 millimeters. The height's not overly important or the thickness isn't overly important. Uh, they're just gonna be chunky enough to screw the draw slides into. All up, I think I need eight of them. Uh, they will go about somewhere like that, not like that there, uh, which will do drawers on both sides. Now this top area isn't having a drawer, but this one here, will, both drawer slides will sit into that. As I'd forgotten about these stretches until after the glue up, I had to add them in a similar way to the corrected leg mortises. The two central rounds were going to be too wide to accept the veneered MDF for the cavity for the set top box, so after gluing in the tenons I ripped that to a better width. This glue up wasn't too bad, but as you can see it had enough moving parts. I used an F clamp as a manipulator to put everything into the correct locations before clamping it with the largest pipe clamps that I have. While doing the big glue up, I skipped adding the outermost support rails as they can be glued directly to the legs. I didn't properly account for the width of the veneer on the MDF, so I had to add some filler strips to the face room to hide my shame. To hide the cables, the shelf that holds up the set-top box had a semicircle cut out of it at the back. That shelf was held up by two cleats glued on the front and back face rooms. Onto the drawers. The false fronts were again resawn pre lamb kitchen bench top material. Even with the dust collector, a resaw this big makes so much dust.
The drills were made out of the standard plywood that I've been using, the 12mm poplar plywood, which was a lot of batching out. First set the crosscut sled to width and to length, then using the dado stack to cut pretty much all of the joinery. First the dado for the plywood bottom and then the locking rabbit and tenon on all the side pieces. The drawers were glued together and held in place with bread so I didn't have to use 10 to 20 clamps to get them all done at the same time. The drawer fronts got their 30 degree bevel cut on the top and bottom to act as pulls rather than using metal hardware. For the finish again I used Minimax oil based satin poly. I've decanted some into a smaller tin so hopefully the larger 4 litre tin doesn't go off. I'm trying out a new, well new to me, lid that lets me pour directly from the tin with no mess. Typically I brush on the poly and thin at 10 to 20% so it flows a little bit better off the brush and levels better. So the TV unit is finally done and I know I skipped a lot of the steps but it is very similar to either the hall table or the set of drawers that I made for mum a little bit earlier and there'll be links to, the, um, to those videos in the description below. Drawers as expected are on full drawer slides with the false fronts just screwed into the plywood boxes. Uh, the only thing I didn't cover that's a little bit different is this box here where the set top box sits. So let's take a look at that. Now the set top box uh, is the only device that mum needs other than the soundbar. Um, so there's just the one cavity and it's relatively small for devices. Uh, a piece of MDF shelf that just sits in there that sits on uh, those um, two cleats back in the front. Two side panels here uh, of MDF again it's the veneered MDF stuff I've used for the side panels. Um, that is just screwed in from the back where the rails for the drill slides go. And this back panel, uh, I kind of forgot about until today. Uh, so that doesn't have finish on the moment. And you can see that that's a solid panel. Again, that's just screwed in from behind the frames of the back rail up this hole. Uh, and the cables themselves actually go in that semicircle that I made earlier on for this shelf piece. So that way all the cables are invisible because uh, the device itself hides it. Mum seems to have an allergy to cable, so this is the best solution we could come up with. So overall, the end product's actually not too bad. A few of these drawers aren't lined up perfectly, and this one's a little bit stiff to get in and out. But these are gonna be used very occasionally. Um, I think it's actually unlikely that once stuff's in them, <laughs> they'll even get used more than once a year, so uh, I don't think that's too much of an issue. Um, the only thing I can say is that I think if I'm doing more of these face frames, I'll be getting a pocket hole jig. As good as the Domino is for doing this sort of stuff, it's still very time consuming and then you've got a difficult clamp up. Um, it, yeah, just quite frustrating. Whereas a pocket hole jig for all its flaws would do this pretty quickly and to a reasonable degree of strength. 
and this doesn't take very much load. Like I'd only be using the pocket holes on the face frame and they don't really have to support any weight. The real strength's coming from the mortise and tendon into the legs. Uh, and I'm not still mortise and tendon in the back rail, or the stretcher, but yeah, pocket hole jigs certainly have their place despite the hatred that they get. Thanks for watching.